So we'll call the meeting to order. It's uh, 531 and it is um, September 22nd. And this is the finance committee meeting. And um, our basically what we are going over is the special town meeting warrant. Um, so just at, if there's any updates on the warrant or anything that we could, uh, or what's happening in the town right now. So I guess we'll look to Carolyn and Linda to give us some updates. Yeah, Linda, I can do a quick update just with a continued, continued analysis of the staffing needs. Um, so we're, we're still, as you know, Deb Radway, um, who was our HR person has come back. And so she did have to quarantine. She got exposed to COVID, but she'll be back tomorrow. So that's really what we're focusing on in the next week um, about kind of honing in those job descriptions. And because um, as you know, we also have to fill conservation. So we're working on those two things. And um, we should have, I think we'll have a good idea by the end of next week, exactly what those job descriptions are gonna be. Um, but I do think those estimates that Linda has shown as far as what the cost is gonna be are pretty accurate. And we're really trying to work within the budgets that we have in looking at um, departments, even like DPW, to see if there is money that we can pull from another area to help support some of those staffing needs. So um, we all work, we're all working together to do that. And um, just a reminder, the town accountant, that was Melanson, um, has now taken on uh, Mary, who was, who was doing the support, uh, support for accounting. And they have taken her on as an employee so that number, that line item will go up for 2023. 20, uh, so, um, but it will go up for partial of this year. A part of it will be for this year as well. That's gonna be an, an extra estimated about $12,000 increase. Um, the Conservation Commission, that's still kind of an unknown as what that's going to cost. Um, so that is the number that we will probably have be we will my goal is for next week to have that more specific what that increase is going to be um, for this year and then for um, which will obviously impact the following year. Um, so we can talk a little bit about the I, I think what's most important right now is um, from what I've gathered talking with Linda and Amy is um, the cruiser lease. And so I kind of wanted to just see what your questions were. Uh, Linda, Mike, and I have been talking a lot and spent some time um, going over, you know, more details about that. So I, I guess I wanted to leave that up to you instead of giving you the whole presentation again, which I can't do justice with. Mike does such a great job. Mike's also on call. He's at a soccer game, but I can call him if there's a question you have, um, and I can present him with that question if he can answer it. Well, I my question would just be, what is his feeling about it? What is his preference? So, you know, Linda, I'm gonna, Linda and I were just talking about that. I think he's in the same situation that I think all of us are. Um, it, it's a viable option because of the unknown of the next two years to three years. You were hoping everything's gonna go back to pre-COVID, but we really don't know what that rebound is going to look like. So this, this is an option that I also think the select board have been throwing out. Um, in the past about what, what can we also look at leasing some of these vehicles. So I felt like his presentation was a good option for you all to consider um, just because of the unknown. It's not, it doesn't have to be long-term, but I think it's, it's uh, and, and Linda, I'd love to get your input as well because we've been talking a lot about it, but um, we really want to give you all the information we can um, and that's a good question. I think Mike is supportive of that. I think he, okay. he understands that, um, the ever-changing landscape of a municipal budget in the next couple of, couple of years. Linda, your thoughts? Where'd she go? Linda, are you muted? You want to come and sit here? I'll sit over there. Come on in here. 
for, for some reason, when I was on screen sharing, I couldn't find my mute button. So I, I don't know where it was. So now that I'm unmuted, maybe I can go back and screen share again. Um, I don't, I'm sorry. All right, are we sharing now? Can yep. you see that? All right. Almost, yep, there you are. Okay, so, um, so yes, I would, uh, yeah, I would reiterate what Carolyn said about the, it does come up from time to time, select board members in particular ask, well, why are we buying instead of leasing? And so now we have a department head who's actually gone out and done a study on whether leasing is working for his department or not. Um, he, in the past, um, this is not the first time he's looked at it, he's looked at it in the past and it has not been um, viable. And he actually thinks with the cost of the vehicles now and the uh, longer life of the SUV style vehicles um, that it might make sense at, this, at the time. But mostly he's looking at the short term that um, what this does immediately, if he puts this into the lease is the $65,000 cruiser is gonna come off the capital article down you know, two or three pages after this, it's going to come off. And um, he feels good about then not competing for a limited capital dollars for borrowing within the levy. So, um, so this is his offer to, um, so that he can continue to buy the, the vehicles on an annual basis, but give the town a bit of relief for the first few years. Now, ultimately, if we were to follow through with this and, and do it for every vehicle every year, every um, cruiser every year, um, that 7,500, uh, the second year, um, it's 7,500, by the way, because it's, we're anticipating it would be half a year this year. But it's really 15,000 a year. So the second year it would be 15 plus this, so 22,5. And the next year it would be, uh oh, <laughs> 22,5. Add another 15, so 37,5, and, and on and on. So eventually, uh, after five years, we would probably be seeing the same annual cost of 65 to $70,000 that we would be spending on vehicles and we'd be spending that on multiple leases, which might add up to the same thing. So whether it is still viable, a uh, viable alternative at that point or not uh, remains to be seen. This is a chance to give it a try, see if it works um, and, um, and see if we think financially that it's a, it's a wise move for the town. And as I said, select board members have asked about it. And uh, at the last select board meeting, when this was brought up, there was a member who said, have, how about, um, have we looked into leasing some of the DPW vehicles? So um, I think this is a good way to get started on seeing how lease, if, if leasing uh, fits in with our plans. So. Can I comment? Sure, sure, go ahead. Um, personally, uh, I think what you get with leasing is kind of like a new car all the time, but you're paying for that. From a financial point of view, you know, after five years or whenever your loans paid off, you you would still have a cruiser that maybe had a few more years in it that didn't cost you anything anymore as far as purchase price. It might still cost something for maintenance, though. But um, I think financially, buying is better long term if you can keep it long term. So, Alexi, I want to chime in on that because. Um, it first came up in Capital, and they talked about it, and that's what I thought, Alexi, too, because I'm on, I have a lease myself, so I understand how the leases work. I wouldn't say that it's called a lease, but I wouldn't really say it is a lease. I, I questioned after our Capital, I did ask a lot of questions, and it went to um, Chief Mason, and then I saw an email from his provider. So what this is, is it's a lease to own. It's a six, he's recommending six years. It's really a, there is no um, buyout. There is no residual value. It is more of a loan. That's what it is. This is a special program. It's a tax exempt municipal um, lease. It's a special program. It's created by the IRS. It's, and so, and they have it, when you do it this way, they have, they're eligible for, for municipal rates. Okay, so they're going to get better rates. Um, right now, we are we are um, in capital. When we purchase it, um, we give Linda instructions to borrow this money. So we are in right now borrowing the money. Um, um, we don't 
that way, but we already are borrowing the money. This is the same thing. It's called a lease, but because there's no buyout, you are paying per payment. At the end of the six years, you own it. In addition to that, the, when, when these vehicles, at the time that they are um, taken from this company, they're automatically at the beginning put in the town's name. So this vehicle is treated the same way. So if there's damage done, it's treated the same way as it is today. He's not looking. So it's really not changing really anything to do with the way they're purchasing. They're purchasing one cruiser a year. They're not looking to grow any anything. Um, they're going to keep uh, rotating them out. So as they go maybe six, seven years as they go, then they put them into the detail and then they'll scrap them down at the end, you know, when the detail cars um, are no good anymore. So they're not looking to grow. The big difference, I think, from where I'm coming from is it's going to, because it's when we were doing it as a one-time purchase, it was going through capital. But now that there's payments going to be coming and it's a little bit different, it has to go through expense. So it's going to have to go through his operating budget, not through capital, but it's still coming out of town money. So it's still the same kind of thing, I guess. But we're going to see it in the operating budget. At first I was on the, didn't, wasn't crazy, but once I understood more of the details, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in favor of it. Okay. Yeah. It's not a lease. No. <laughs> okay. And it's called no a lease. Yeah, but and there's no buyout. Right, so you got to get the- And there's a term. It's either you do it for five years, you do it for six years, and then you're done. It doesn't oh. just keep going on. And the rates are favorable, and the total amount you pay is comparable to just outright buying it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, then it seems like a no-brainer. Why not yeah. take right. advantage? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would think the only issue would be, and this would be the chief's judgment, I would think, is whether they should do it over a five-year or six-year just owing to the wear and tear on a police cruiser. So that at the end we might end up with a vehicle that we can get a little bit more use out of down the road versus we use it up and basically it's you know a junker. Yeah. He's Again, estimating, may... yeah, he's estimating a six-year life. Okay. So so he's saying to do it over five or six year uh, lease. And then they would still hold it, but um okay. for okay. the detail. All right. Um do you need a vote on this at this point or no, no, it's more of uh, more information for us for when we go to um, budget. Okay. Yeah, tell me. But it's good. It's good to know what's happening. So um, um, thank you for bringing that up, Carolyn. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, so the other item that was brought over from capital is the, uh, the ditches, uh, the funding of the ditches which was a capital item. Was it at 50, Amy? Did you bring it in at 50? I think you brought it in at 50 for the capital. Um, so. Let me see. I think it was 50. Uh, ditch maintenance, he put in at $50,000. So um, that also was being used to, not only to alleviate what's being requested out of capital, but it also made sense in its own. It's a little different than the than the lease because it's going to be a steady amount from year to year. It's not going to grow. Um, this is a uh, when he when DPW was looking for the hundred thousand a few years ago. It was uh, a lot of money to sort of catch up because they hadn't been done in a while. And now that they're closer to maintenance, they'd like to see. It. We I think it would make sense to we think it makes sense to get it back in the budget as an ongoing maintenance item to put twenty thousand every year into their budget for the purpose of uh, maintaining the ditches. I said it was kind of similar to like the trees. Yes. Mm. Very much. So the staff changes Carolyn mentioned, I was just adding them up. There's about 43,000 between one, two, three, four departments. So that's still to be worked out. So that's not a huge increase in the budget. That's the well, 43,000 for staffing increases. The town accountant is 12,000. Um, do you want to hear more about the, the accountant? Why that's going up? Um, yeah. Yes? Yes, oh, please. Oh, okay, that was an, um, um, Carolyn, do you, do you want to? No, I started, but you know more of the history of how Mary came to be 
here as a consultant and now that she's working for Melanson. So you have more of a history. You'll bring it together much better than I will. You just about did it. <laughs> yeah, oh, Mary. Okay. Now we've, yeah, we've had Mary for, uh, as our dedicated person in one form or another for about five years. She was with Bay State and we lost Bay State and we kept her for a little while and we switched to, um, on her own because there was a gap between when Bay State left us and when we switched over to Ken Scherf's company through PVP C. And um, then uh, we had them for a few months that that didn't work out real well for us and we switched over to Melanson and it's working out great. But we got a break in the contract for Melanson because we continued to use Mary for continuity and for the fact that she was able to enter the um, the um, invoices for payment, she did all. She handled the accounts payable, and Melanson did the rest uh, of the accounting for us. And we knew that that was only going to last as long as Mary was content staying home. And COVID helped us with that. But the, unfortunately for her, though, she she stayed home and worked remotely, and uh, and. Um, just work directly for Hadley in this, but we knew it was going to end as soon as Mary moved on and found another job, which she has done. And therefore we have to pay the higher level of fee for Melanson now to cover all of the work. That's the bad news. The good news is they hired Mary. <laughs> so we will have the benefit of the continuity with her, with that company, um, but we are going to pay the Melanson rates going forward. So the difference is going to be, would you say, uh, would you say 23,000, 23, 23,000 a year, was it, Caroline? 24, I think. 24? It's 24, but we were already paying Mary. Um, that's right. So, oh, yes, not, so it's not going to yes, be a complete. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's right. So the increase was uh, more like 12 or 13,000 on the 12 this year and 13 next year on the in the budget because we already had an allowance of 15,000 for Mary, which we will no longer be paying. So we're just being paid. So and that's Linda, uh, if I can just give a testimony from working and I've shared this at other meetings, but just from working in municipality for so many years and always had an in-house accountant, I can tell you, I have never experienced such quick responses. Um, and I was, I was like, wow, you guys, when I first started here, I was like, you guys really resource, you, you source out for accounting. I was, so pleasantly pleased on how quick your re the responses are for anything from any department. You can request a report from Lori at Melanson or Mary, who's now at Melanson, for either of them. Within a half hour, you get a report, a response, and a follow through. In 30 plus years of working municipal government, I have never, ever experienced that type of quick response. And uh, Lori also comes in once a month. So she's in-house once a month with us and um, becoming part of the in-house finance team. So you, it, it has been a remarkable surprise for me. And as well as we're, we're also not paying benefits. And that's another huge thing. You could be paying benefits for two positions. So this is, uh, I, I think for Hadley, this is such a good arrangement. Hmm. So it's actually not 12 or $13,000 difference. It's actually less than that because the um, her her salary didn't include the cost of the benefits. Is that correct? She was contract, so we don't she was not contract. pay the benefits. Oh, yeah. But I, what I was saying, if you would, if you were paying a full time accountant right now, you would have another seventeen thousand dollars added on to what we're paying them to cover benefits if it Got was it. a paid person in house. I'm glad it's working out so well. Yeah, really well. <laughs> Yeah, We'd like fine. it to stay stable for a while. Uh -huh. Good plan. <laughs> so those are the regular, uh, the, the operational increases, which again, so we're at 43 for staffing and, and 12, just about 50, $55,000. And then the, the ditches and the cruisers, which will help our capital budget. So now we get into the uh, the, the larger, uh, this is where finance committee does its job. I'm making, uh, really thinking these things over and seeing what kind of recommendations you want to make. Um, we have, I have thrown in what I, uh, high numbers. I've, I've, hold, I've thrown in the higher amount there for your consideration. Um, we are going to have extra funds available to us this year. Our uh, free cash is going to come in quite well. Um, I think if you, if you uh, saw from our reports that were sent out at the end of the year, 
there was uh, our receipts came in higher than we had projected and the there was quite a bit of savings in the budgets from people really clamping down. Um, so we have we will have a good return free cash uh, Lori says will be submitted at the end of this week and we should have results um, fairly soon. But um, I'm going to go to the funding page and then come back to those last two pay two items. Um, we had our funding uh, set for FY22. Um, we are looking for an increase since it was 18. We were at 18.5. Um, and we are looking for an, an additional 443,000. So we're going to want some, it will all be out of the free cash line. It is, it is a lot. Um, but we, so there are some choices to be made. Um, now that let me explain the capital plan. This is, this is, these are your decisions to make. Um, about two or three years ago, finance committee decided to increase the uh, debt um, line, the principal line, by hundred thousand dollars, which meant that we could do hundred thousand more in um, borrowing within the levy each year, and that would be a hundred thousand that would go to capital, and not have to go out to debt exclusion overrides. So it was an easier way to explain uh, to expand our capital plan within the current budget, but that meant putting some more money in there. And I will tell you, it's made a it's made a really wonderful difference in being able to accelerate the payments of the principal, uh, the amounts that we're doing, and it allows the uh, the capital planning committee to uh, to designate about three hundred fifty thousand dollars of purchasing each year instead of two hundred fifty thousand, which is what it was. So you could increase that again, given that we're not going to be doing, um, expecting uh, to do any debt exclusion um, uh, borrowing for the fall town meeting. And I don't know what we're looking at for, for spring town meeting, but um, it's a lot easier for uh, the town to handle borrowing within the levy and putting it in the budget. So that's an option you have to do with some of the um, money that we may have available. The other is to, another is to restore OPEB. We had knocked that down. We've kept down that at 16 for a couple of years. We, if we restored it, this is the level that our OPEB plan required for our plan, our personal, our own plan required for, um, for um, FY22. And we could restore that. That would be an extra 260,000 in there and get us back on track for our OPEB planning. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, uh, we probably could squeak through one more year saying COVID, we've had issues, and then resume it for next year. But we would want to, we would really want to make a, an effort to get uh, back on a good OPEB uh, payment plan for next year, if that, if you were to wait. Um, another option for using free cash, uh, we don't have it in the budget here, but we added it in as a, an article later on. Um, is to Article Six is restore um, funds that had been borrowed from stabilization fund. Here we are. So it, we could make at least a partial uh, return of monies to the stabilization fund. So another decision that you would have is: Do you have a you would how would you prioritize putting money into stabilization versus OPEB um, if you were to have to make that choice? So. Um, we thought by bringing this to you this at this week and knowing that the select board is going to start voting on some of these items next week, that as a finance committee that you might want to um, sort of uh, to get it to weigh in and, and consider uh, the priorities that you would see for the town once we get into some extra funding, considering we probably do have about a million dollars, we may have about a million dollars to to use in these in this way. So I have a question, Linda. Uh -huh. question. So to make it clear, the cap, the capital hundred thousand that you mentioned there, when we increased it a couple years, like uh, several years ago, to mm -hmm. increase it by a hundred, this is an additional hundred. So now yes. you're looking at we're going to be two hundred more than we used to be. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, and it's not. It's 
it, right now it's increasing the capital plan, but as a reminder, we used to set aside $250,000 a year into the capital stabilization and spend that at town meeting. But then that, that extra money got absorbed into the budget. So we are no longer setting aside money in the capital stabilization fund. So this has been, this is, this is partly restoring and getting us back to where we were before. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm 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 okay with that. Um, maybe we can go down the list of the group, um, and maybe we could you can give your two cents or, and then prioritize. Um, for mine, I would prioritize. In, in my opinion, I would like to see the first would be stabilization. My that's where I'd put the money first. Then my second for me would be OPEB, and then third would be capital. And that's how that's just my priorities and how I rank them. Maybe we can have every member um, sure. put theirs in. That was my initial feeling as well. I second that. I, I totally agree. I, I, would, I, would, uh, I would consider, you know, reducing the capital to 25 or 50 this year to just start to ratchet it up to restore it. I would do uh, some amount higher than OPEB last year, maybe get us up to somewhere north of 50,000 and below 100,000 to chip away at it. And I would put the rest in stabilization. You know, if we run into a crisis, we need to build those funds back up, mm -hmm. um, you know, and um, as much as we hope that we're going to see the end of this pandemic soon, that may not be the case. It might be another year or so of issues and, and, and also the, you know, some major event in the town that requires, you know, us to dip back into those funds. I think we need to restore them or we're going to get caught short sometime. And, uh, uh, and I, I agree. Am, oh, sorry. And, and I am fully on board with us being ahead of all the rest of the state on OPEB. But I think, um, you know, we should, you know, put more in than we have in the past two years because we're in a little better position and then put the rest of the free cash into the um, stabilization. And we can always, if we find that we're, you know, caught up next year to stabilization and where we were because of, a, you know, you know, some of the funding we we're able to get through grants and stuff to, you know, move some money around, then we can go back and, you know, put another, uh, you know, change that again. I, that's how I feel. Before I answer this, I have a question for, uh, for, for you, Linda and Carolyn, and that is, um, I know that having such a good handle on our OPEB plan has, um, it really had an impact on our good favorable bond rating. And I'm just, I just want to ask a question about um, if we do, you know, if, 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 we, if we are careful and, and just put only a little bit into OPEB this year, is that going to affect our wonderful bond rating? The, um, we, the bond rating changes when we go out for a bond and we don't have plans to go out for a bond for a couple, oh. uh, probably a couple more years. So the next time we might need uh, to uh, roll our borrowing onto a bond, it would have to be at least a million dollars worth of, uh, and, and I think it's actually closer to 3 million they're recommending for going in for a bond. But it depends um, if we end up doing a lot of borrowing for Route 9 for the work there. I know we have uh, some approvals there or if we go in for a DPW building or if we have a year where we really uh, decide we need to catch up on um, uh, vehicles, repairs, uh, buses, these things that, that we have been putting off for a few years, we might have a chance to, uh, might be able to do that. We might be looking at a bond at that point. So I'm saying it's probably two to three years away, which doesn't mean you just clean up your act right before you go for a bond. Yeah, but yeah. but I will I will say this, we have done very well under OPEP. Um, I was telling Carolyn earlier, I thought that we, we were all really kind of told that it really wasn't going to be an issue for us not following through our, our OPEP contributions during COVID. Oh, and I would okay. say that we probably could safely extend that one more year. Given a preference, I would rather see us uh, I would not want to see us fully fund this and then cut, then, then take a step backwards next year. Yeah. I'd like to see us on the increase, even if it meant, meant holding something back this year. 
Okay. Um, and so because I think it just looks good that we're building and we're going towards something and we're not kind of being, well, we have it. No, we don't. We put it in. But that it's that's not a, a, a good plan. And that's, I think, what what we got credit for with Standard & Poor is not the amount or the total so much as that we we came up with a plan and we stuck with it. Okay. So um, so I don't want to do, you know, up, down, up, down. It's not something we want to do. But I think we can squeak through another year. I like Paul's idea of putting something in, and even if you made that 50, um, it's really only about a 30,000 increase there. And it gets us a little bit closer and it looks like we're making the effort. And um, one, one other thing, we're sort of, we're uh, wondering whether to even mention this, but I think uh, you should have all of the information is, uh, we didn't make much of a contribution this past year, but actually the increase to our OPEB funds were more this year than the prior year when we made the full contribution. This was a really good investment yep. year with OPEB. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we don't that want that as an incentive not to uh, keep up with the plan, but that in combination with the fact that we maybe want to get a little more time uh, before we get back on our feet is uh uh, is good. So um, north, as, north of 50,000, 50 to 75 would be a reasonable number that would impress overall and be prudent. Are you asking me? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah you're no, okay with that. I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a good I'm, idea. yeah. Right. I'm okay with what you want to do. Okay. And um, if we, if we reduce the capital to 50, we're making progress, but we're not jumping that far and then we take the rest and put it towards the, the the difference here and put that all towards the stabilization. Dylan, I don't know, we haven't heard from Dylan and who else? Hey. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I agree with everything everybody said. Um, I would lean towards holding back the OPEB, even OPEB a, a little bit more because um, we're good, probably going to be okay. If we're not okay in Hadley, other towns are going to be worse off than us. Yeah. And if there's some kind of blanket relief for OPED funding, uh, I'd hate to be way out ahead of the game because then we're kind of not going to, we're going to be a loser in that relief. Yeah. The OPED, correct me if I'm wrong, the OPED is collect, or collected kind of off to the side, right? It's not, it's like a earmark for OPED is not specifically already allocated. It's in an OPEB trust. It's in a it's in a uh, a trust fund with held by an investment company, and the only it thing that it can be used for, for, it can only be used for these purposes, as opposed to the stabilization fund. Um, so if we put the money into OPEB, we can't call it back for other purposes, but we can always use it for our um, for our benefits line item year after year. So I'm not sure. I don't think that we would we would lose because we would use our, we would spend that down uh, in our budget each year on the portion that we pay currently, as opposed to the post-employment portion of it. Okay. Um, so that's a good safety valve in the event that they give everybody some type of relief. I think so. I don't, and I don't think any, I don't, they think the state's being as cautious as the rest of us right now, but I think it's something to keep an eye on from year to year. Um, do, do you want to know where we are with stabilization? Yes, that would be okay. great. That was my next So one. as of about a year and a half ago, we did have two million in it still. Uh, for a special town meeting 2019, uh, besides funding the general fund budget, we had a couple of other smaller items um, and uh, it, we brought it down to a little under 1.7 million. So we spent about, we spent about 340,000 at that town meeting. Okay. Then at uh, last year's annual town meeting, as in, 2020, we did return uh, the balance of the funds after we'd done everything else. The town had $183,383 in free cash, and we put that back into stabilization last annual meeting. But then we took it out again, $530,000 to fund the current year's budget. And I think that was under the understanding that we did tell the town. I think the town was told that um, a portion of that was a, an advance from what the school was going to let us have. Um, they couldn't do it at that time. We had to get through the year and they did save that much out of their budget to have that return, which is one reason our free cash is so high. It doesn't, it does include the school's contribution. Okay. So to turn around and put that back into stabilization um, probably does um, 
does make sense. And unlike, uh, and we can we can use it again. You know, as we see, it's very easy to put it in saying we're using we're funding FY23 apportion out of stabilization, but we can't if we don't have it there. All right. So to recap, where are we and what is stabilization at now? How? Oh, I'm sorry, 1.3 million. We're it's now at 1.3. So we need 700 to get back to the two. Over time. <laughs> and we could make somewhere around 300,000, maybe 325 back in right now, just off of this with these trims. That's true. Okay. And then there may be additional money in free cash that there, we could there, also throw back in there. And there, then if there, we, there, we could pull it out. And there, approximately, what do you think that would be? May I ask? Okay, we well, not having specifics, we've used uh, we've sort of thrown ARPA funds and free cash in together. We are expecting that we could use a portion of ARPA funds for the budget. That's what we have said, um, we explained at right. the annual town meeting, and we would stand by that. So we could, um, it's looking now like it's um, higher than 500,000 that we could use out of ARPA, which would mean which would mean seven to 800,000 out of free cash, which would leave maybe another 300,000 okay. left, which would be what you're talking about. Okay, with. so we could, we could, we're in shooting range of possibly putting 600 of the seven back in this year, potentially. And I think that that's a little, things. yeah, that's a little high, but, um, but uh, I, I like the way you said, whatever our balance is at that point, we do have a, a, a few other free cash articles on here, not big, not big, probably less than 50,000, if even that, uh, a few other transfers to make. Um, but yes, if you want to have the bail, the uh, balance of whatever we have available to go into uh, stabilization, it's something we can wait and put the figure in as the last, the last figure. Um, we should keep a balance in free cash. Uh, I think at one point, I think a select board policy was to try and leave 75,000 in free cash at one time and have that climb. So I think it's good just to leave a balance there. Okay. Amy? Yeah, I like what we are, what I, I think it's good uh, what we just um, talked about, trimming this, you know, the, um, the OPEB a little bit and um, putting more into the stabilization fund. I'm on, I'm on board with that. I mean, that's, that's a piggy bank that if we have something that comes up, you know, all of a sudden, I don't know what, some piece of equipment implodes on itself and we have an emergency, we have to do something, that money's there if we need it, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, that's what it's for. Yep, it has to be allocated at a town yeah. meeting, but it's there. Okay. But, it, yeah. but it does provide, well, I mean, the other thing is you could put more in the, don't we have a fund that the, uh, our, our committee, we, we had increased that to what we didn't need as much though, but some of yeah. that could be set aside there and then returned at the end of the year. If you wanna avoid, you know, have, you know, I don't know, a quarter million dollars available on an emergency basis that doesn't have to go in front of town meeting. Right, I'm trying to find what you had decided that to be. We didn't, we, wasn't that the one, Amy, where we had asked originally 75 or hundred and then we didn't need as much. So we went down to 50 or. I think you just went down to 85. You went okay. down to 85. Okay. I think you had 75,000 in it for FY21. Um, we had suggested doing that to 100 and you raised it, you lowered that to 85. Right. Okay. So it's still an increase, but. Right. So if you, if you put it in that fund, if you take some of that money and put it in that fund at the end of the year, if we haven't used it, we can return that back to free cash at the end. Also? Yes. Yes, it will. If you want to put more into it, I would add a uh, I would add a line right item here to increase reserve fund right. by a certain amount if that's what you'd right. like to do. Amy, what's your thought? I, I think that's a really good idea. I mean, th that's what we it was a we can go back up to the hundred which was recommended to begin with, right. and uh, we lowered at the time, um, okay. but now maybe we can increase it because all it will do is go back to free cash. Right. So I see the harm in it. Yeah, that way it's at least available so that if there is something that comes up and, you know, um, whatever, you know, we, we, you don't have to go back to town meeting, you can come to the, to us and we can say, yeah, that's, you know, something that has to be done, you know. Mm -hmm. 
so do you want me, I, I'm not sure if I, should I change the, shall we change these and make these finance committee recommendations yes. to the select so board? I so would. do you want to vote on what you, are we generally, uh, maybe we just don't want to address the others quite yet until we figure out what's going on with staffing? Right. Start here. Yep. Amy, yes. you okay with that? Yeah. I'm good with that. I, so I, I don't know. If, yeah. I think 50. That, are you going to yeah. vote or are you going to do? Well, why don't we do it and we'll vote as, we'll, unless people want to vote each line. No, I think, why don't I think we taking it in total gives you a better perspective. Because we can change it during a discussion, correct? If we make a motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So why don't we say 50, 50 and 50. You're being OPEB? Yeah. That would be my recommendation. Again, I want to usurp when we get into discussion, people can change that. And Alexa, I understand what you said, but I, I, I'm okay with the response that we would always get to use that money for other ongoing, you know, annual expenses towards benefits, right? Yes. So we would draw on, let's say health plan, we draw out of OPEB and then we would get that money back the other way by having not expended it or something. Yeah, I just don't trust that the way they structure any potential relief might not yeah. circumvent that dynamic, you know, like just yeah. put the total amount in our OPEB fund and say, we're not giving you any more money. You guys are okay. Yeah. I have honestly, I don't care if you heard anything about there being any relief offered by the state. They have got their own problem. Actually, actually, yeah. they've, they've been saying the opposite. They, they've been pretty clear that like, especially ARPA, we can't yeah. use it for that. Right. But you never I, I, know, though. That's the thing. I mean, I, no, I understand never, that. You don't know. They could come and say, okay, we got enough complaints from all yeah. of the communities. You can put, let me see what your OPEB looks like. Looks like. Right. So you never know. It's very yeah. unpredictable. I'm basing my feelings off what happened with PPP and EIDL during the pandemic. You know, once the pandemic hit, it was a whole new world. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah but, it, but, but at the same time, we're talking state. And, and the state, I mean, when you think about the, the obligation, the unfunded obligation, town by town adding up, and the state's probably the same boat, that's such a huge amount of money. I don't know what they could do, but, you know, sell Boston or something. I mean, you know, to pay that off. I mean, how, honestly, how it's got to be huge amount of money. I, I couldn't even guess at it. Yeah, I, I mean, I just think yeah. once we're, if we were in a situation like where all, every town was in, in a trouble, every town, something bigger is going on with the world and there's going to yeah. be other concerns, you know? <laughs> I, I think this is kind of like uh, deferred maintenance on bridges where we, you know, there's just no money has been set aside and all of a sudden somebody's got to come up with the money. But I, I don't know that the state is ever, I, I think the state's going to have to come up with some major plan to bond or something that debt, but I don't. I think we should chip away at it anyway. Yeah. Well, the thing is that the feds might just give the states a bunch of money and say, here, you distribute it as you want. Yeah. Um, so there is an infrastructure bill that still uh, it hasn't been yeah. voted on, but mm -hmm. we are so hoping that infrastructure, true infrastructure yes. is going to be on that. Um, yeah. Because Hadley is beyond desperate for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. South Maple. Water and some other stuff. Anyway, uh, I, I'm going with 50s. Everybody, uh, we can get into the discussion. And then the and then the the balance of this is that we're going to talk yes. about these things later. We're going to increase the reserve to 100. So that would be increase of fifteen thousand dollars. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. To 100. To 100. Oh, are we going by consensus, Amy, or? <laughs> well, but then we're going to talk about it, right? Okay. This will be a motion. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion, someone can second it, and then we'll have a discussion, and then we either amend it or we'll vote on it. And again, it's non-binding because it, it's our recommendations. The select board is going to have to make the decision. I'll second that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then the rest. So the and then, and then the balance we're going to put into the plug-in, the net balance that we just saved here, we're going to put into um, the whatever article it was for uh, restoration to the reserves. Stabilization. Stabilization. Sorry. Okay. Um, I don't know what that number is, but we just 
Right. Or, I, I'll, I'll have to figure it out. Oh, Are we going? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, you're you're specifically referring referring to the savings in this Here, whatever in this oh. area, right? Okay. All right. Well, so, it looks to me like it's probably going to be uh, over two hundred thousand. Okay. So about that, about two hundred thousand yes, for, for this part, and then if we can pull the rest of the money out of what is anticipated free cash to go back. I don't know what that number is. I would also add that in here or make a separate motion. So we get, I, maybe we end up with five, 500 to 600 rest restored. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't know what that number is. You're going to have to tell us that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have, um, Paul had made a motion, Alexi, and seconded. So, um, do we have anybody wants to discuss on making any changes to these numbers that were just discussed? Is there any other numbers someone wants to mention? All right. So, seeing none, uh, why don't we take a vote then? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, so I see all five hands up and all five eyes. So it is unanimous. Uh, so five zero zero would okay. be our vote to recommend. Yep. Black board. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Sure. Are you uh, booked to meet with them next Wednesday? No, we don't have a net meeting set up for select board. So I guess uh, I don't think. Yes. So there is going to be a uh, they are going to meet next week. So that would be a good time for, let me just look. So I, actually, I need to update you on something very important, the date and the place of town meeting. Um, oh. Let me just look for a second. Um, actually, you could still, I don't think we're meeting on the 6th. I need them to meet on the 29th. So that would be probably the meeting you guys should be at. So, and here's here, I'll give you an update. Uh, the Board of Health and the town moderator would prefer that the, the town meeting be uh, take place outdoors. I agree. So, I agree. the sooner the better because of the weather. Sure. So, we the recommendation that I'm giving the select board next week, and that's one of the other reasons, is um, for Saturday, the 16th of October at 11 at I'm, I'm going to say it but don't panic the public safety building because there's a there's a little bit more opportunity for protection so anybody mm -hmm. older can sit um, in that garage area and um, the main reason it was difficult last time was the sound system so we are confident that we're going to be able to address that so everybody can hear will be able to hear even if they're sitting outside because that really was the major, besides it being freezing, very cold. Um, I think we're a month ahead almost to the date. Um, I think it'll be a lot warmer and I think the sound system will be able to make sure it's appropriate so everybody can hear. I'm sorry, I missed the day that you're saying? Saturday, October 16 okay. at 11. Okay, thank you, October 16 at 11. Okay. I just don't have, it's up to the select board to finalize that, but I don't, I don't anticipate them saying that that wouldn't work. Okay. okay. Just to let you know, uh, now I won't be able to attend that. Um, that is going to be my wedding date. So you guys should have fun without me. Oh, it's that already. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. you so sure? hopefully it's going to be a beautiful day. Beautiful we, we, we could serve hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to work my best at getting there. Um, I'm scheduled to work on Saturday until 12, but I'll uh, usually I can try to find someone to work around my schedule. So we'll see. Um, I, I, I don't know if I'll be there. If, if the worst case scenario, I get there late. <laughs> and it, it could change because I have to see, because um, this really should only be discussed at the select board meeting um, 
they, there could be a conflict with one of them or two of them. So okay. Okay. The otherwise we would look at the follow uh, the, the 20, the 23rd. Okay. okay. Um, the, if we're gonna do um, a joint, um, a tri-board meeting next Wednesday, the 29th, I'm looking for someone to, cause I won't, I will miss that one. I'm gonna go to a soccer game. <laughs> I have made it um, a priority this year to, my daughter's a senior in, in uh, high school to go to all her soccer games. Good for you, mom. Yes. Amy, soccer mom. Okay. That's right. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, the soccer game's at Gateway at six o'clock. So I'm guessing that's same time the meeting is. All right. So, the tri board, we start at 6 30 or 5 30? 6 30. Okay. Right. I can make it. Let me just see if there's a, hear a public hearing. Hold on. So Linda, you'll you're gonna come up with what that we'll see that probably in a few days you'll figure out what the total you estimated total to go into that. I it may yes. modify a little give or take no, some. No, no I, I like I like that approach. You make it something that I it's actually a formula, I can figure it out. Okay. But right. so at, at least the starting end of it, and then the okay. uh, how much more uh, we'd have to wait a week. We have to wait till we get our free sure. cash. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Sounds like a plan. So um, is it, are we good next week? Yes. Okay. I'm assuming it's six thirty. Usually, if there's a public hearing for something, a uh, license or something, we start at six. But um, it looks okay. like yeah. Okay. Well, I could do six if they want to start earlier. So I could do five thirty. I could do five thirty. Yeah, if they want to start earlier, earlier is better. I'm sorry. Are we talking about the 29th? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. What's most important is to have someone there conveying this information what you voted tonight. Um, happy to do it. Thank you. All right. So um, I know there's a lot more in the warrant that we don't, that we're gonna have to um, meet one more time to put in all our recommendations because like um, things CPA hasn't met and put their votes in so they, so you can't see that yet. Uh, is there, could we book another time to get a final numbers and we can do recommendations? When can, when do you feel that you can put in those numbers? Uh, let me just see. We're going to, I mean, we're going to have to have it, uh, the final numbers for the capital expenses on the 28th. So. And CPA on the 27th. Yeah. That's, so those are, those are a lot of numbers coming in. On there's a lot coming in. Does the select, does the select board work? Are they meeting on the, the 6th? No. Okay. I don't think so. Not at this point because. There is a, um, hold on, let me see. Sorry, I'm reaching over you, but that's where my calendar is. No, so there won't meet to the 13th, which is the public forum for the town meeting. Okay. Because they need our recommendations before, before they get to the 16th. Yes? Do you think you can have your recommendations next week, next Tuesday? On the on the twenty eighth. On the twenty oh. ninth, you mean on Wednesday? You don't, on the twenty ninth. I'm sorry. If if we get all the information, we could do that all in that meeting. Yes, I would think so, Amy. Yeah, because yeah. we'll have both CPA and Capital will have met today, uh, the twenty seventh and the twenty eighth. So if we if we meet at five thirty before before their meeting, can we do that? And then then we go to tri board. So we'll we'll vote in advance. And then when we go to the tri board at six thirty, then we're able to present the whole thing. And we usually have to wait half an hour at least anyway. So we yeah maybe could keep going while they're going. Yeah. 
Would that work? I think it's a good idea. That way it's one evening as opposed to splitting us up into multiple evenings. Mm -hmm. Amy, is that when you said you can't be there though? It is, but the thing is I could possibly, you know, Paul can run it and then I can, I can run if it. we start early enough, then I can, I can do it on my phone. Right. Um, and we could pray for rain. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> just, just trying to help out, Amy. You know. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Five thirty. Okay. Yeah, Five thirty. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else anybody would like to discuss? I did want to ask uh, a question about this um, bylaw uh, uh, board that they're going to be creating. Mm -hmm. uh, does anyone have any information about that? I do. I do. That was um, a recommendation I made to the select board. So they, um, it's it's a, a it's a committee um, to look at the bylaws. Um, it's usually about a one to a two year process of reviewing all of the bylaws, doing all of the due, due diligence, the research um, to find out that all, to, just to see if the, all of the bylaws are up to date, are they appropriate, especially, and are they, are they relevant? You have some really old bylaws on there. And we also have bylaws that need to be revised or even included to help other departments be able to to make decisions and do what they need to do. So there's a lot of different areas. So I made a recommendation to the select board to create that committee um, with a suggestion on who should be on it, which um, would include the, the significant boards like your board, who would be impacted by that, by a bylaw. So um, I gave them a list and then um, suggested that they advertise for two to three weeks. So they we just posted the advertising for residents, any, you know, I would say like two residents to be on it as long as, as well as boards like planning, ZBA, police department, fire department, building department, department, um, so that you would have all of that input from those departments. Mm. So it's, um, it's a really good project to do for towns. Uh, and, and it is, it's, it's long, but it's not forever. So so you don't need to be a lawyer to be involved Absolutely in not. No. Oh, okay. No. Nope. You just have to play one on TV. Yes. No, because what happens is when you review and update bylaws, they will go through another procedure of legal reviewing it. And then it has to be um, approved by town meeting, all of the bylaw recommendations. And then it has to go to the state for them to approve it and say that they're legit. Oh. So it's a long, long, pro it's, it's long. It should mm -hmm. be long. It shouldn't be done in six months. No, right. No. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you. Sure. Paul? Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit. I know there's discussions now about uh, going to a split tax rate. And I am um, personally very much against that. I think it's a bad idea to play businesses against residents in terms of rates. I think that the businesses are under a lot of stress right now. Um, and if there are certain sectors that are gonna have a reduction based on valuation because of what's happening with their uh, businesses to then increase the rates on all the other businesses specifically um, is a, uh, the wrong message to send out. I think that we're all in the same boat together. And I think we have to, as a, as a community, um, share that load. And I don't think it's fair to shunt it off onto just the businesses. Likewise, I would feel the same way if, if suddenly, I don't know, uh, personal real estate uh, went down due to some change in, I don't know what, deduction laws or something. Um, I think that the rate should stay the same across the board if it means we have to increase the rate a little bit to make up the difference for some of these sectors that are showing reductions, then that's what it has to be. We're still far below what other towns are doing in terms of their annual, their per thousand rate. And I, and I, I think that once you make this move, you're sending a message to the businesses. And, and quite frankly, if you look at the tax rate in this town, it's businesses, I believe, that are 
pulling the lion's share right now. Um, the Route 9 corridor, we, I mean, we're blessed with this state highway down the middle of the road so that we could give up uh, to uh, commercial development uh, at a very large level with malls and strip malls and so on that have perpetually re changed over time and have been able to, you know, changes, you know, I mean, they used to call the mountain farms mall the dead mall for a while and look at it now. Um, so we'll see adaption in the, in the business community, but I think if you start increasing the rate uh, to specific to businesses, you're going to see a change in the way some of these companies see Hadley as a place to come and start businesses. And we also have, in addition to what are a lot of chains, we have a lot of small employers here and they are going to get hit hard and that's not what they need. And I was, wondering, I was wondering what the rest of the board felt. I, I wondered if it's not inappropriate for us to just have a straw poll and, and send a, um, you know, send that also to the select board. Can I, can I respectfully just um, as sure. a town administrator in wanting to protect all of the boards as well as town of Hadley, this sure. wasn't posted on the agenda. Oh, okay. I would, yeah, I would just strongly recommend there be no deliberations. I would okay. say Dan, oh. Dan is on. If you would like to call Dan, Dan has, um, a, can it talk with you about it, but there will be a hearing about it as well. So okay. I just want to protect, I'm just trying to protect you guys. That's right. Okay. okay. Can't, may uh, I just make make an additional state to stop me if, if it would no. Nope. Okay. All right. Fair enough. What we can do is, since it is a topic for just you know that is for discussion, um, so we can put it on the agenda for um, the uh, meeting on the 29th. Okay. Should um, because to go through the warrant and put all the recommendations, and you need uh, Carolyn will need to be at the select board meeting. Is 5:30 enough time? to be at the select board meeting for six. Is, did you say six or 6.30? 6.30, I thought. Oh, okay, so that does give an hour, okay. I mean, we can start at, start if at I five. Can just, if I can just remind you that there will be a hearing on it, so you'll hear all of the information um, that I think it would be helpful if you get all of that information um, provided. It was even more than what was presented um, be, you know, when, when that original uh, discussion came up at the select board to uh, to let you know that there was going to be a hearing, I think it would be really helpful. Um, that way, Dan can be available and any of the assessors to answer any of the questions that you have or any clarity. It might be helpful before that discussion to have that. Okay. Um, because Carolyn, they're not going to vote at that hearing no. by the select board, so there's right. time to get all of the information. You have plenty of time. Yeah. And then have a meeting to then bring your recommendations to select board before they have their meeting where they vote. So when is that, when it, when should we be looking for that meeting? What month? And you're right there. When is that meeting? Where's my calendar? Well, November. First, first yeah. select board meeting in November is the, the hearing. And then they're gonna vote at the next select board meeting. So the third is the hearing and the seventeenth is the vote. The third November. of November is the yeah. hearing. Okay. And that's at, at six o'clock or usually the hearings are at six. I probably don't have my times here. I can let you know, Valerie. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else that someone wants to bring up or do we have any other, anything, any other topics? Okay. All right, if there is none, uh, I, I would um, ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor. Right. Aye. 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 All right. Wonderful to see everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye.